So I'm just going to talk through um, the new assignment for the final for Commerce class. I'm going to go through an overview of what it is that I'm exactly asking of you, kind of breaking it down a little bit more. And then I'm going to go over a timeline that if you follow this timeline, which is also posted on Blackboard, then you should be able to be successful in creating this final. So the overview is that you're going to create a comic that reacts to the general theme of comics and culture. So that's pretty open in terms of what it is that you could talk about. I've given you three examples, but feel free to come up with something else that I haven't thought of. These are just kind of things I thought of off the top of my head that you could cover. So you could talk about your own experience because you are a person who exists within a culture. So how were comics viewed maybe growing up? How do you feel like they're viewed by your peers now? How are they viewed by people in your family versus yourself? So for a quick example, in my household growing up, comics were looked down on by my father and I couldn't have them as kids. Uh, I could, you know, read the Sunday comics in the newspaper, but I wasn't really allowed to go and buy a comic at a comic book store. The only exception was Tintin, which was made by someone named Hergé and it was made in Belgium. But because it was written originally in French and then translated, he looked at it differently. My father was Quebecois and from a French Canadian background. And so to him, anything that came in French originally, well, that's high art. So I was allowed this one comic because of its particular cultural connotations. So that's an example of a comic I could write about my experience of comics. So you could tell me a similar story about your life. <clears throat> you could also think about how comics are seen differently in other countries other than the United States. So one example right there was, you know, about comics in Belgium and France. Um, but also I know a lot of you guys like manga. You uh, watch Dragon Ball Z, things like that. You could make a comic about how manga is seen in Asia. Or you could look at a specific part of Asia. You could look at Japan or Korea. And you could talk about how manga is in their culture. And you could either just talk about that or you could talk about it as compared to US culture or you could compare how the same manga is viewed in the US or in America. Interestingly, side note, Italy is the largest consumer of manga outside of Asia. So that's like a really interesting side point. So I have a friend who whenever she wants a translation of uh, the manga that she reads, it's always available in Italian first. So she gets the Italian version. Another option would be to talk about how we as Americans have changed our opinions on comics over time. Or maybe you think that we really haven't changed our opinions on comics. We talked about earlier in the semester about the comics code and how comics were burned in the 1950s. Again, you can think about Fred Wortham. And then in the 1990s, you got graphic novels, comics on like the more popular level took a dark turn. And right now, superhero comics are super popular, kind of widespread across culture. When I was a kid, they were just for nerds, but that's not the case anymore. So you could talk about how things have changed over time, or you could look at one area in specific, like you might want to talk about the craziness of the 1950s, or you could compare that to today. Whatever you want to do is fine. And you could come up with something that I haven't mentioned at all. As long as it covers comics and culture, then it's valid. So if you're not sure, just post it on the discussion board or email me. Now, the piece has to be a comic, but I mean that in the broadest sense of the word. So I want a combination of words and pictures that tell a story. Now you can think about the zines that we did. I showed you examples where people cut out images from magazines and pasted them together, and then they put text in boxes. You could write text, um, like if you were wanting to research something about the 1950s, and then you could draw an illustration that goes along with it. Or you can make a comic in the traditional sense. Any of these are valid options. But do make sure that if you are using someone else's work, like if you use a photograph and it's like the main part of that image, or you want to like reference someone else's comic, that you're going to note down where that came from. So you can reference things if you, you know, visually reference things as well. But you want to make sure that if you do use something reference, if you are referencing something in your comic, that you note it kind of like you would in a research paper. If you have any questions about this, you can always check in with me. So you could take a photograph of what you're doing and ask like, do I need to cite this? And you can ask me how to do that. That's absolutely fine. We're gonna check in along the way so I can give you some feedback about this as we go. 
in terms of how much, it should be for US letter pages. So it would also be the equivalent if you're using another format or size. So like for the zine, we folded the paper. I mean, so you could fold it in half to like make a booklet. So if you were doing, if you were taking a sheet of letter paper and folding it a half, then you would need to make eight pages instead of four pages. You want to cover the same amount of paper. So it doesn't matter to me if you do like four individual pages, you know, and just take a photograph of each one. If you do front and back of two pages, or if you fold it to make a booklet or however else you want to do it, as long as you're covering for eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. So again, we'll check in as we go to make sure that we're all on track. Now here, I'm gonna go over a timeline about how you could approach this and make sure that you're hitting your mark, you're being successful, and that you're not gonna feel like at the end, oh my God, I've gotta do all of this work. So start thinking about a topic now. And by next week, post three topics on Blackboard. There's a discussion board in the final topic module. Look through other people's ideas. They might help you come up with some more ideas. So come to class on the 1st of April if you want to talk more about ideas and what you want to do. If you're still feeling a little bit like lost, like you're not sure, but make sure by the time that uh, April 1st is done, you have an idea about what your topic is going to be. Because that's going to give you just over a week to plan out your story and decide how you're going to fill those four pages. Your thumbnails are due on the 9th of April. So that means that for all four pages, you should have a plan about what content you're going to have and where it's going to land. So that, no, make, that means that you know what text you need to write, what images you need to come up with. If on the four pages, each one's going to have, you know, a small image and it's going to be mostly text, or if it's going to be a mix of text and images, or if you need to come and like source some images online, you know what you need to find and you know what you need to do. The more that you do in this phase, the easier it's going to be for the next phase where you can then take what you've already made and kind of refine it and draw on top of it if you want to. So you're going to, if you want extra credit, you can post your thumbnails in the discussion board. So you could get two points of extra credit for posting your thumbnails up. Um, I'm also gonna put up for you for some help, some sections from the Drawing Words Writing Pictures book um, that talk about narrative, that talk about page layout. You can look at them for tips in terms of how you might wanna structure your story. So you've come up with a story in your head, but you don't know how you wanna lay it out on four pages. Those can maybe help you figure out exactly how you wanna do that. And again, um, the sections that we went over in class, I'm gonna put these in our module here about like how you might wanna look at laying out a page because that might help you just kind of get some idea about how you wanna map things out. At some point between um, the 7th and the 9th, I don't know where the seventh came from, the first and the ninth, uh, you can come to class via Zoom to ask any specific questions that you have about like, if you want some tips or like when I'm laying things out, I'm not sure how I wanna do this, or you know, I have this idea, I'm not sure how to make it. Come on into class and we can talk about that. We can talk about some specific approaches uh, or some general approaches to how you might wanna address the problem. Now for people who posted their thumbnails on the 9th, between that and when the uh, ROFs are due, if you want to give feedback to people, you can get up to three points of extra credit for commenting on somebody else's thumbnails. Now, this doesn't just mean going on and saying good job, but actually giving at least three sentences of substantive and constructive feedback. So that means like finding specific things about their work that you like and telling them why or finding areas where you're like, I didn't understand, but here's a way that maybe uh, this could be clearer, or here's an area that um, it seems like you're not sure how to proceed and here's how I would proceed, those kinds of things. So you can get some extra credit there. So between posting your thumbnails on the 9th and then your roughs on the 23rd, I would like you to schedule at least one session with me to get feedback and I'll go over what you've given me and what would be good to do between then and the roughs. And that can help you with any technical problems you're encountering, either drawing or if you are trying to use any software or anything like that, I can try to help you with that. 
Um, if you can't get on Zoom, let me know. We can figure out an alternate way for me to get you some feedback. But I wanna make sure that you have a good plan, that you feel comfortable about executing your plan, and that I can give you any like overall tips that will make sure that you're successful going forward. So you've got two weeks between the thumbnails being due on the 9th and your roughs due on the 23rd. Again, for extra credit for two points, you can post your roughs on the discussion board. And again, as we go, I'm gonna post tips and how to videos and how to post on websites um, for some kind of general guidance that's more specific to the execution. So at the beginning, I'm gonna post more about kind of generally how you're structuring a story, how you might wanna approach laying your page out, and then how do you actually go about making the stuff um, and ways to like go about revisions. I'll post that in a folder about roughs. Um, at this point, you've got one week between the roughs being due in the final. So your roughs should be either almost finished pages or finished pages that you maybe uh, feel good about. And then that way we can like give you some feedback about areas either you could uh, like punch up or that, yep, you're good to go, you're locked and loaded. Um, so if you do have questions, obviously please come to class and come and ask these questions as you go. And again, for three points of extra credit, you can comment on someone else's roughs. Uh, and again, we must provide at least three sentences of substantive constructive feedback, specific things that you like or dislike and why. Now, in order for people to be able to actually act on that, you need to make these comments by midnight on the 26th of April for credit. Now, by 5 p.m. on that 26th of April, I'm gonna give you my feedback so that that way you still have a good four days to make those changes, anything that like any tweaks or any like big things I see that you would need to do to be able to be successful in your final, I'll make sure I get that to you on that Sunday. So that way you still have time to make the changes. Um, again, obviously with the extra credit, people can only get the three points of extra credit if people post their thumbnails and post their rough. So I do encourage you to get feedback from each other. Um, I hope by now we all feel pretty comfortable with each other and understand that we're all very supportive and that no one's gonna, you know, rip your work or be like, oh, you can't draw. Like all of us are in the same boat. All of us are trying to muddle through and it's really helpful to get tips from other people too. So I really do hope that people take me up on this opportunity and that you post your work and even in just posting your work, you're gonna get some extra points. So you can get up to 10 points of extra credit uh, just by posting your work and commenting on each other's work. So I do hope that you take advantage of that. Now, I do wanna remind you and stress that your final exam was scheduled on the 30th of April. And that means that I have to get grades into the registrar by the 2nd of May. So I don't have room to kind of massage the deadline. If things are late, unfortunately, I really can't accept late work because I don't have time to then turn around the grading and then get those grades into the registrar. So I do wanna stress, please, 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 do have your final into me on that 30th. And I think that's also why having the roughs where you're either finished or you're almost finished with your work a week ahead of time means that a week ahead of time, you should have a plan for how you're gonna finish anything that you haven't done. And then that way you can execute it and you can be successful. So I hope that this outline ho helps you be successful with this final project. And as always, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me either through email or by coming to class uh, at two o'clock on either Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I can address your questions in the Zoom meeting.